So, I don't know what to say. Well, alright, I do know what to say because I've got a script, but I'm not really sure how to say it because the Saturn III Ultra has left me a bit stumped. In fact, it's left me bewildered because it's done the exact opposite to what I've come to expect from printers that use ACF film. This seems to defy the laws of nature, physics, and everything I've seen before. So, if you've watched my previous videos and you know the spec of this printer, you may know what to expect from this one. Or at least you'll think you do anyway. You would expect me to say blah blah, great printer, just like the normal Saturn 3, but ACF. The release film, which increases speed but diffuses print edges and makes the surfaces look cross-hatched and terrible. Well, no. Not at all really, and I know I'm eating my own hat with this video based on what I've said before, but I can only tell you about what I see with my own eyes after thoroughly testing these printers. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. The word Ultra is not an understatement with this printer. Being marketed as a superior model to the base Saturn 3, you may be surprised a little to find that you should expect the print quality to be a little worse. You see, the Ultra is one of these new printers that has come out pushing speed metrics. In recent history with the M5, the Hallett Mage Pro, and even the Mars 4 Ultra, I've seen that I should err on the side of caution when it comes to fast printers, because in those examples, what allows that amazing speed typically reduces quality quite a bit. But like I said, the Saturn 3 has left me stumped in that regard. And I'll be honest, with reviews I normally just print a few things on each review, just enough to form a conclusion about performance, but with this, even after I'd cemented my opinion, I couldn't help just printing more and more models and being more and more amazed each time. But I'll come back to that. For now, let's look at what this printer is for those people coming into this model with fresh eyes. The Saturn 3 is a 10 inch 12K printer, but just like with LCD TVs, that K designation is little more than marketing. What's more important when determining a printer's quality is the size of the individual pixels on the screen. The smaller they are, the higher the quality, generally speaking. There's also things like the light sources and light refracting lenses that determine sharpness too, but again, I'm going to come back to that. In the case of this printer, the pixel size is odd because the pixels aren't square. With a resolution of 11520 by 5120 and a print area of approximately 219 by 123 millimeters, the pixels are 19 microns on the X axis and 24 on the Y axis. People have commented on previous videos to suggest that rectangular pixels could cause resolution or even scaling issues, but the truth is that with only a 5 micron difference between the axes, it really doesn't even matter. So for simplicity, let's just call this a 24 micron printer, and that's the number you should be comparing when you baseline quality on other printers. Now, the write-up of this printer says it has a 9H tempered glass screen protector, but unless this is directly integrated to the LCD panel, I can't see one. Just like my Mars 4 Ultra review, where I mistakenly said it hasn't got one. So I can only assume it's integrated into the panel, which makes it a little bit harder, if not impossible, to replace it should any damage occur. The printer's build volume is the just mentioned build area of 219 by 123 millimeters, but it's got a build height of 260 millimeters. That's one centimeter more than the base Saturn 3, and six centimeters more than this printer's current direct competitor, the Anycubic M5. Like all Elegoo printers lately, it comes well packed with more foam in the box than printer, and you can easily just slide this out of the box onto the worktop the right way up. One of the first upgrade features here is that the chassis is all metal, which adds no tangible value, but it's nice to immediately see that you're getting more for the extra this costs you over the base Saturn 3. The lids had Elegoo's classic red colour scheme replaced with black, so I think Batman would approve of this model. This also comes with a vent hole for the Mars Mate, which I now have and I've got it connected up to test, but that's for a completely separate review. But form-wise, this isn't just a carbon copy of the Saturn 3, but in metal with a black lid. In the case of this printer, the power socket has been moved to the right side of the chassis, along with the Wi-Fi antenna and the USB port just in front of that. And this is quite annoying placement for all of these parts, to be honest. And I always like to do a little song and dance whinge about these things being on the side. It would be much tidier to shift the power and Wi-Fi to the back and put the USB port on the front. And you may not agree with this, but for those people out there who are limited to horizontal desk space, you might want to put something like your washing cure up close to this. And these components prevent that somewhat. 
it's bad enough when this is a USB port, but yeah, you can solve that with a cheap USB extension cable. However, the power socket and Wi-Fi antenna being here are absolute blockers. But that's really all the negatives. The build quality of the whole machine is absolutely excellent and is once again a refined version of what Elegoo have released before. Yeah, it's not significantly different, but that's good. Elegoo know what works and have focused on making that better. But the quality shows best in relation to how it prints, and for that you've got dual linear rails and a ball screw instead of a traditional lead screw. This greatly improves the stability of the plate and ensures a much smoother motion. The benefit to you is fewer print issues like layer shifts. And whilst it's a tiny thing, this printer has little rubber feet which keeps it sturdy on the worktop. The VAT, as previously mentioned, comes pre-installed with ACF release film. This frosty film is designed to allow resin to release 30% easier than traditional clear FEP, PFA or NFEP, whatever you use and whatever it's called. And I will come back to this and talk more about it in the print quality section because I've previously declared war on this stuff, but the Saturn 3 Ultra seems to be the redeemer. Though when it comes to the VAT, I do wish this were a little bit taller. Since this is a large printer and we'd frequently print larger things, it would be better if we could fit at least a full litre of resin in here at a time. And the new build plate style has the same finish as the Saturn 3 along with the Mars 4 and the Mars 4 Ultra, and this new style of plate makes it so much easier to get prints off while still being super strong and holding them in place during a print. The Saturn 3 Ultra comes with the usual box of accessories and the Elegoo extras. You get your typical masks, gloves, paper funnel, both plastic and metal scrapers, along with a super cheap USB drive, and once again, grab yourself a SanDisk replacement if you plan to use one. And I do need to hand it to Elegoo still, because the metal scraper they give you with their printers is far better and more comfortable than the rubbish you get from any other brand. It's a tiny thing, it matters little, but it's different and better, so thanks Elegoo. But the main extra you get in all Elegoo printers is the integrated carbon filter. This internally USB powered device certainly reduces smells, but whether it reduces the VOCs or not, I don't know. But I have recently spent over £100 on a device that will let me start testing this soon, just as soon as I learn how to properly use it. But with the Saturn 3 Ultra, you actually have space to plug in two of these filters if you wish. The extra one would need to be purchased separately, or maybe you already have one from an older printer, but it can take two at once. Now, if you just thought of an innuendo there, that's on you, not me. This is a family-friendly channel. As briefly mentioned before, the printer has Wi-Fi, and you can easily connect your printer to your local network using the on-screen UI, which is far simpler than how I've had to do it with other brands using some crazy phone app that only works half the time. But once this is done, when you choose network print in Chitu box at the end of a slicing process, you should see your Saturn 3 available. Just choose it and your print will travel to the printer wirelessly, and you can even start it remotely too. Just make sure the bed's clear before you click start. And you do need to remember to manually delete the files from the internal memory occasionally using the UI, and you have to do them one at a time. Just seriously, Elegoo, one button to clear all the internal memory would be really useful here. If you could code that in, that'd be great. But the Wi-Fi is such a handy and easy to use feature, and other than copying the files from it to my PC and filming it for this video, I never used the USB drive once for this entire review. And speaking of things I didn't use, I also never used Voxel Dance Tango either. I've already had enough issues from it to bother trying to go back to it for a while. Just moving parts around the build plate is tiresome in that program. So I stuck with Chitu Box for everything. But no matter what slicer you use, I need to have a crack at Elegoo's .goo format for 3D printers. And yeah, this is still new and Elegoo are still developing it, but I've had issues with this before, like crazy large file sizes, which in reflection seem to only be a problem when enabling anti-aliasing. Additionally, as pointed out in this excellent video by Snarky Arts, anti-aliasing doesn't actually even work when using the .goo format anyway. This new format still is in its infancy and has some issues for Elegoo to work out. And it seems that Elegoo is aware of this and agrees, because when Chitubox sends files to the printer wirelessly, it does so in the old .ctb format, not goo. Though no matter which Saturn you've got, if you want to save to USB instead, thankfully you can choose the file format you want to save as in Chitubox, which helps avoid that non-working anti-aliasing issue too, though this doesn't currently work for Mars printers. 
Anyway, coming back to the UI, just like the Mars 4 Ultra, this is a significant improvement over the basic UI that Elegoo have given us before on previous printers, which is incredibly basic and kind of makes Elegoo look a bit behind the curve. This new Ultra UI is a HD interface with numerous options. It's got great depth, everything is laid out intuitively, and you can even adjust some exposure and speed settings mid-print. And this is the UI that Elegoo needs on all of their printers going forward. When it comes to leveling on the Ultras, Elegoo has replaced their usual ball joint with the four-point screw fixture. I've always said I've found this mechanism to be sturdier, and since Elegoo have now included it on their premium range of printers, I guess that proves the point that this is a better method. To actually do the leveling, you just loosen the four screws, lower the plate to home, hold the plate down as you tighten the four screws, but make sure you do alternating corners, go back out of the movement menu and press Z equals zero. Though honestly, Elegoo, that button could really do with being in the previous menu screen where you're actually moving the plate up and down. I'm sure you can find room for it somewhere. Right, we are halfway, and with all that, it's already, I think you'll agree, very easy to see where your extra money goes if you're considering this over the original Saturn 3. But I will do a more in-depth and thorough breakdown in a separate video comparing both printers. Also, if you are considering buying this printer or any of the printers based on our reviews, it would really help us out if you'd click our affiliate links down below the video in the description and the top comment before making a purchase. Thank you for that. Right then, the meaty part. What about print quality? Because let's be honest, that's what matters most. So I didn't get any resin to test with this printer, no high detail resin, no special fast resin, so I decided to just use my own Wargamer resin, which is incredibly sharp detail, but also smooth where it needs to be, and it's been described by other users as the closest thing they've ever felt to store-bought plastic models. Yay! If you want to have a go at this stuff down in the comments, feel free, but all I ask is that you try it first and try and find a resin that's more balanced for miniatures. If you're looking for high quality plastic-like miniatures from your printer, this is the stuff. Anyway, I printed out the same exposure range finder that I always print, and I used the same exposure settings I already had for this resin from my Saturn 2, and I was quite happy to find that I got a perfectly acceptable print first try and this was at 1.5 seconds for 30 micron layers. And if you want to know how to easily set up and dial in any printer and resin combo, please check out my video guide which is linked above and in the description below. I genuinely don't mean to sound arrogant, but I'm yet to find the person who's new to 3D printing where this video has failed them. It's helped so many people, and if you're new to 3D printing, want to set up a random printer and resin combo that you've picked yourself, that video will get you started, I promise you. So anyway, other than printing it, I thought very little of this exposure test at the time other than it's balanced enough for a decent exposure, and I just got on with printing models. And the first thing I printed, like always, is the same Wolverine bust that I always like to print, and this came out really nice. In fact, I was very impressed. I was actually reviewing the 18 Micron Mars 4 at the same time, and it honestly took me a while to remember which print was which because I'd washed them both at the same time and got them mixed up in my cleaner. So yeah, even with an ACF film, I'm mixing up prints from the Saturn 3 Ultra with an 18 micron printer without ACF. So okay, hold on. So I then went and printed some miniatures because these would easily show any significant quality loss. I printed some miniatures from Creature Caster first, which are some of the most detailed miniatures out there, but once again the details on them were super sharp. And for these, I'd even enabled anti-aliasing and 2 times image blur to soften any visible layer and voxel lines. And I also printed out a Dredge Marine by Mezgeik. These have more smooth surfaces, but mainly because I just love all things Bioshocky, and these models are just awesome. But once again though, I had an incredibly sharp and detailed print, without any significant layer lines or voxelization either. It was still there under the light at some angles, but it wasn't significant, and I could certainly paint over this without being able to see them. Now, are these the sharpest prints I've ever had? Well, I honestly don't know. We've kind of already passed the threshold of print quality being visually distinctive on many printers, and we did that a while ago. So the fact that I can't tell is, it's really saying something, especially considering that this printer uses ACF. And all the while I was checking the smooth flat surfaces of my models to find those usual cross-hatch lines you typically get from ACF films, but 
I honestly couldn't see them. Now, the surfaces did have a very soft texture, almost a matte effect, but nothing as significant as what I'd seen before. And it, it is hard to show you what I mean because it's hard to even see, but if you could look at two prints up close to each other, you would be able to tell once you knew what you were looking for. The difference is that minimal. I honestly wondered what was happening and even put out a video to my channel members asking what other tests they think I could do just in order to verify my findings, but nobody could suggest anything which would push this further. It's quite conclusive. And so, as I said in the intro, I just kept printing. I printed this bust of Chibs or Tommy Flanagan, which is one of the Sons of Anarchy characters sculpted by Sid Nake, and this is absolutely flawless. Just, just look at the zip teeth on the jacket. So that's the print quality you can get from this, but what about speed? Because this is advertised as a fast printer. Well, just like quality, I've said several times that print speed, like quality, is determined by the resin and not the printer. If you print too fast, some harder resins will just tear away from the build plate or the previous layers. Now, since I hadn't put this Wargamer resin through its paces yet in terms of speed, I was still lifting at the default 60mm a minute or 1mm a second. But when I decided to reprint this model of Corrupt Engine from Blackforge Games, I started upping the speed, and I needed to reprint this because the one I printed for my Mono X6K video got dropped and kind of broke a little bit. So I figured I'd up the speed to a silly number just to see it fail at first and then slow it down until I can get a successful result. So I sped it up to five times my usual print speed and tried 300 millimeters a minute or five millimeters a second. And to my genuine surprise, this was a complete success. So I pushed it twice as hard and doubled this to 600 millimeters a minute or 10 millimeters a second. And that worked too. So I pushed it half again up to 900 millimeters a minute or 15 millimeters a second, and it was still a clear success. And I don't even know if the printer can move that fast, but it's still below the default second stage lift that I got in the original settings. But the speed, with success, at this sharpness, is insane. So yeah, as was initially promised with ACF, I am getting comparable quality to FEP prints, but with lift speeds around 15 times faster. I honestly still don't believe this based on what ACF has shown me previously. But now, a print that would have taken me over a day was completed in just over four hours. And to stop any questions or negative comments, I did double check this and I went back to my basic Saturn 3 and printed the exposure test out using the Wargamer resin because I'd previously used the very brittle 8K resin from Frozen. And whilst the Saturn 3 without ACF using NFEP is slightly sharper, it's only slight significantly less than any other ACF comparison I've done before. And yes, I've tested the Mars 4 and the Mars 4 Ultra using the same resin. So how is this even possible on the Saturn 3 Ultra, especially when all my other ACF printer tests have shown to be so different? Well, it was only when going back over the spec of this printer to write my script for the video that I noticed the light source of this printer is different to the basic Saturn 3 and the aforementioned Marses. So whilst the Mars 4 Ultra and Basic Saturn 3 have a frunal collimating light source, this has something called a refractive light source. I have no idea what that is or what that means. Yeah, and I know what refraction is, but the description here explains nothing. After all, a frunal lens refracts light too. So I assume this is some kind of custom frunal lens which results in incredible sharpness. And I do know from earlier reviews that a frunal lens does a ton to make 3D printers sharper by directing light in more of a straight line. And the intention is to make LCD printers operate more like DLP printers by controlling light direction. So if this is something other than that, I can only infer that Elegoo have designed something proprietary and better. Because the results truly speak for themselves. You don't need to listen to me, you just need to look at what the printer can do. So yeah, in summary up to this point, this is an incredibly fast printer that uses an ACF film, yet the results are so close to a print without an ACF film. Now, I'd probably slow it down when going back and printing minis just to ensure the support survive, but I'm honestly considering not even replacing it like I've suggested people do in the past with other printers. And whilst people have complained that I don't just replace these films in my reviews immediately to test them, I prefer to keep them in place until I get the alternate version printer and do a separate comparison video. 
hopefully now you can see the value in me keeping a plate with ACF and another with NFET because more tests are needed still. So Elegoo have either done something super special with that light source or they could have used a different type or brand of ACF from other printers, including their own Mars 4 Ultra, which I said in that review is heavily impacted by the ACF film. But I genuinely can't believe this printer has changed my opinion on this stuff, because the slight ACF diffusion here is enough that it even helps to reduce layer lines, but without a significant loss to detail, at least not as much as I've seen on any other ACF printer. But I do want to cement my conclusion, and I will do more testing, including a comparison video where I put the ACF VAT on my Saturn 3 and the NFET VAT on my Saturn 3 Ultra, because I need to see if I get the difference I expect when using ACF without this special refracting light source. So watch out for that video and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. So to finish, should you buy this printer? Well, as I think about that, I'm looking back to Vogue's video review where the thumbnail states too much for too little, and well, in terms of overall output, I do agree with that to a good degree. For anyone who has a Saturn II or equivalent, you aren't getting significantly better print quality with this model. But it is what's under the surface that matters. You're getting so many improvements over the last generation this printer has actually realized the vision of what ACF promised. And yeah, I am saying that nervously because I'm still bewildered as to how I've got this experience with this printer that uses ACF, where I've had so many terrible experiences before that I'm not just talking about it, I've shown people. Is it like the silicone lottery where I just happen to have got a good ACF sheet with this printer? I genuinely don't know. And this isn't something Elegu sent me. I ordered this printer on the first day it went up for pre-order, I paid for it. So even if you are super sceptical, it's not like Elegoo will have known to have had any interference with this printer, because it wasn't sent to me direct from them. They don't know which one I got. But anyway, back to the value of what you get here. The printer also has Wi-Fi, dual carbon filters if you get a second one, an improved UI, a much more stable Z-axis, and a better build plate that holds models better while still making them easier to remove. Now, I wouldn't rush out and upgrade if you've got an earlier printer in this similar sort of generation, but if you are upgrading, I'd say right now, get this over any other Elegoo printer. The Saturn III is good, but to me, the extras here are easily worth more than the difference in price between these two models, because Elegoo have absolutely nailed it. I want to say thank you for watching and thanks to our members. Please make sure to subscribe so you can watch our other comparison videos of both printers and what they do when given each other's job. I'll also be doing direct comparisons between this and the Anycubic M5 series. I hope this has helped you decide what printer you want or even just validated an existing purchase. If it's either of these, then please click that like button and drop a comment to feed the YouTube algorithm and help others. If you are buying, wouldn't you kindly click our affiliate links below before making a purchase. Until next time, make good choices. Fohammer out.